There has been some exciting news from Elon Musk's company SpaceX over the past few weeks. One of those being the news that the growing satellite internet network known as Starlink, which is owned by SpaceX, is in talks with multiple airlines to make SpaceX and Starlink the airline's onboard Wi-Fi provider. This would bring the idea of Starlink from being a home Wi-Fi source and make it fully functional on airplanes for passengers to enjoy. There are a ton of good things that would come from this if SpaceX is able to solidify the deals. And in today's video, that is exactly what we are going to be discussing. So what is the plan for Starlink Wi-Fi on airplanes? It was announced at a conference in early June of this year that expanding Starlink and incorporating it onto airlines is currently being discussed. This comes as big news, especially since Starlink is currently in its beta form. As of right now, SpaceX is in talks with several established airlines. They apparently have their own aviation product in development, which they also have done demonstrations with as a way to get the product finalized in the very near future. Now, airline Wi-Fi is nothing new. But the use of low-orbit satellites versus the geostationary orbit ones in use now is something worth talking about. Starlink satellites are going to be located in what's known as low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit is an Earth-centered orbit that is close to the planet with an orbital period of 128 minutes or less. Musk's company argues that his low Earth orbiting satellites are better equipped to provide reliable and fast Wi-Fi to airline passengers. Jonathan Hofeller, the SpaceX vice president of Starlink and commercial sales, is quoted as saying, all in all, passengers and customers want a great experience that geostationary systems simply cannot provide. So it's going to be up to the individual airline whether they want to be responsive to that, or if they're okay with having a system that is not as responsive to their customers' demand. What he means by this is simple. The fact that Starlink satellites are going to be moving at such a high speed, the global coverage they will provide will be a lot easier for the airlines to rely on when compared to a satellite stationed over a specific area. That satellite may have a reliable signal when close to that area, but once you're out of range, you better hope that there is another one on the same system that can pick you up. Otherwise, you will be without wide Wi-Fi for that portion of the flight. Starlink, being so vast and spread apart, yet constantly moving, is going to supply a strong signal no matter where you are connecting from. And who doesn't want that? Especially on a flight that may last for hours and take you halfway around the world. SpaceX is clearly planning to help us stay connected. Now that we have talked about the plan for providing airlines with reliable Wi-Fi, let's dig a little deeper into what the Starlink constellation is. As you may know, a satellite constellation is a grouping of man-made satellites that work together in a system. The way this differs from a single satellite is that a constellation is able to provide permanent global coverage. A well-formed satellite constellation is set up in a way that makes it so that at least one satellite will be visible at all times, no matter where you are on the Earth. The goal of Starlink has been to provide fast and reliable internet worldwide, and is currently in its beta form right now. The project was publicly announced in 2015, and after many years, it seems like their plan is finally coming to a head especially with some upcoming changes to the launching methods. Since the Starlink launches began back in 2019, a few SpaceX officials have begun talking about plans that the company has. These plans would see the transition from launching the Starlink satellites using the Falcon 9 to launching on SpaceX's Starship. This isn't to say that they doubt the Falcon 9's abilities. I think everyone can agree that the Falcon 9 rocket has been more than reliable when it comes to launching Starlink satellites. When you look at the numbers, it's just something that can't be argued. Since 2018, SpaceX has launched an impressive 1,800 satellites out of the roughly 4,400 that are going to make up the entire constellation. And of of those 1800, the most recent 60 have been successfully launched using the Falcon 9. This being said, it does look like Starship is in line to blow it out of the water in almost every way. While the Falcon 9 will still have a lot of practical uses, the Starship appears to be better equipped for the task at hand. And not to mention, it will also be very cost effective. Starship is SpaceX's idea of a fully reusable, two stage to orbit, super heavy lift launch vehicle that has been under development for some time and has recently gone through its fifth high altitude test flight from Starship. Starbase in Texas. With how low the production cost is for Starlink, which currently is estimated to be around $250,000, it wouldn't surprise anyone if at least a few were included in the earlier phases of orbital test flights for Starship. Especially since once the Starship is fully approved and tested, it will be capable of deploying 400 Starlink satellites per launch. That's almost seven times more than the Falcon 9 has managed over the course of multiple missions. When you look at these numbers, it is clear why they would choose to proceed with these launches on Starship rather than the 
Falcon 9. To put it simply, even if the early Starship launch is being more expensive than the partially reusable Falcon 9, the per satellite launch costs of Starlink missions would still even out with the costs of the many Falcon 9 missions. So why wouldn't you get it done in one payload rather than multiple? Besides, the expected numbers are actually cheaper than the cost of launching with the Falcon 9. The hope is that soon the Starship will safely make it into orbit, and successfully touch back down on land multiple times in a row, thus demonstrating that the Starship is fit to launch unmanned payloads of Starlink satellites. Now, something to note is that even if Starship is successful, it doesn't guarantee contracts for SpaceX. However, when you take a look at all that SpaceX has accomplished, it would be almost foolish to doubt them in any capacity. Now, when it comes to using Starlink's constellation for onboard Wi-Fi, this won't change much for the passengers other than provide them with a more reliable internet connection, and whether or not it boosts the airline's ratings and draws in more passengers. As of right now, we don't know what the airlines would be paying for this Starlink Wi-Fi, but looking at the beta version that is intended for rural homes, they might be paying a bit more than they would like. At the moment, Starlink internet costs $99 a month, which some may consider expensive. But what does this monthly payment get you? Starlink promises high-speed, low-latency broadband internet. Beta users are seeing data speeds that vary from 50 megabytes per second to 150 in locations that are currently available. That's a pretty good connection speed. But is it worth the $100 a month price tag? That's up to you. It should also be noted that like most cable and internet providers, Starlink requires a payment for the equipment as well. As of right now, the physical kit which includes a router, tripod, and satellite dish will cost about $499. That seems expensive, but if Elon Musk has shown us anything through all of his companies, is that his services are reliable. No one knows what's coming next from this deal to possibly supply airlines with Starlink Wi-Fi, but I'm sure we will be getting more updates soon, especially as SpaceX continues to deploy Starlink satellites. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it.